Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of our Best Football Manager 2020 Tactics. Today we're looking at the Three Amigos, which is a high-pressing, counter-attacking 4-5-1. It looks to force a mistake before hitting hard on the counter-attack and it works really well in the big games. We beat Chelsea, Arsenal, Man City, Manchester United and Tottenham using this system. It's been tested for almost half a season with Wolverhampton Wanderers. You'll see the results in just a second, but I also use it in rotation with Concerto with my Scarborough Athletic save. The results have been amazing and we're going to split this video into four sections. We're going to start with the results before we look at shape and roles, then instructions before I go into a tutorial on how to use the tactic itself. But before we get into that, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. That way you see new guides as and when they go live. And if this is helpful, give us a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. Before we jump into the system itself, let's have a quick look at the results. So we'll begin with Wolverhampton Wanderers test. Started really well, performed very well in Europe. In the Premier League, we managed 27 goals, only conceding 8, and that was from 13 games. But the most impressive thing was those big match performances. We beat Manchester United 3-1, Chelsea 3-0, Arsenal 2-0, Tottenham 1-0. We even drew against Liverpool 2-2, who are on absolute fire this season. Match stats speak for themselves. Four clear-cut chances, one half chance against Manchester United away from home. We limited them to six shots on target and you'll see a recurring theme here of a lack of possession. The same thing happened with Chelsea. They only had two shots on target. We had 11, three clear-cut chances, two half chances from only 41% possession. And the final example I'm going to show you today is against Arsenal. They had five shots, four on target to our 22 and 10. We had with a clear cut chance and three half chances. They only managed one half chance despite having 66% possession. This is all about keeping a defensive shape, pressing high up, get the ball back, score as quick as possible. And let's finish off with two more screenshots from my Scarborough Athletic save this time. We came up in our debut season in the Premier League against Chelsea, managed to beat them 2-0 very convincingly. They only had two shots on target, no chances. We had one clear cut chance, four half chances, and we bossed the game. I generally use Concerto with Scarborough, and I've been using this 4-5-1 to compensate in the really tough matches. They don't come much harder than Arsenal away from home. We thrashed them 4-0. They only managed three shots on target, one chance all game. We had four clear-cut chances at the Emirates and six half chances. So just goes to demonstrate what this system can do. Right guys, on to shape and roles. Before we do, let me quickly explain that I use Concerto, this 4-2-4, as my default tactic with Scarborough Athletic. But I have tested the three Amigos for half a season with Wolves, like you saw in the results. You could use this as your default, um, but definitely use it for the big games. I'm talking the Arsenal aways, the Man United, the Man Cities, like you saw in the results, they really turn up on the big day. The idea of the system is you press really high up the pitch, get the ball back, and then launch a counter-attack. It's really high-tempo football. They look for balls over the top. The inside forwards dribble forward, while the complete wing-backs look for that overlap as they cut inside. The playmakers look to pick out those passes. You've got your security in the halfback who drops in to form a back three when everyone else is committed to the attack. You won't have much possession, but you will create an awful lot of goal-scoring opportunities and soak up pressure. Let's look at suitability quickly so up front you want an advanced forward now this guy while it'd be great if he can do everything the most important thing is that he can finish he's fast and he can recreate his own opportunities the better he can dribble and carry the ball the more goals you'll score because he does get that ball over the top from the centre backs and the playmakers the inside forwards need to be just that flair dribbling skill if they can finish, fantastic. That's a real big bonus. Look at Yotta. He got four, goal, eight, four assists and eight goals from 14 games. But on the other hand, you could use someone like Adama Traore, who I use more often than not off the bench. He made 14 sub-appearances and scored 10 goals. 
as the players were fatiguing towards the end of the game, he was an absolute nightmare for them to deal with his, with his 20 acceleration and pace. And he isn't actually a natural inside forward from the right, he's a winger. But I still played him in that inside forward role because he did float into the box and get on the end of some late crosses. A lot of his goals came that way, but the fact that he starts so deep takes advantage of his speed. Playmakers need to be your maestros. You want passers. So a deep line playmaker maybe doesn't have to be as mobile, but if he can shoot from range, that would be fantastic. Um, Neves managed eight goals from 14 starts, which is pretty fantastic considering he's the fifth offensive player in this system. Um, look at that, 17 passing, 17 vision. That says a lot. And Mutino likewise, he had really good vision, pretty good on the ball, a good dribbler, uh, but great technique. That's what you want, an all-round playmaker for the advanced playmaker role. He scored four and assisted 10, and the halfback needs to be almost a converted ball-playing defender. He's gonna drop back, so you want him to be able to head the ball and be able to play as well. The ball playing defenders likewise, they need to be a towering presence, pretty fast because you're going to have a really high defensive line so those balls will come in behind, uh, but a good ball playing defender at that. And the complete wing backs need to be complete. You don't want to be getting someone who can't play. Matt Doherty for instance has really good dribbling, crossing, technique, he's a good all round player and his mentals likewise, he's no slouch as well, he's reasonably fast and he works hard. Johnny is exactly the same. The more technical your complete wing backs are, the more goals you're going to get, but you need them to be able to work hard and they need speed. The goalkeeper will end up one-on-one, -on -one, unfortunately. It's just the fact that the system is quite risky, so you probably want someone who's pretty good in those sorts of scenarios. Before we look at the instructions and the set pieces, you do need to download this tactic for it to work, I'm afraid. The set pieces are far too intricate for me to repeat on a video and you to be able to mimic. Likewise, there are some player instructions, not a lot, but there are some important ones which I'm not going to go through. So I would highly recommend you download this. That is in the description. If you go down there, there'll be a link to the Three Amigos post. Once you get to our website, literally scroll to the bottom of that post. You'll be able to download it really simple with instructions from there. Right, so we've got an attacking mentality. I never change this other than in the match itself, which we'll go over in just a second. But let's look at the in-possession instructions. So you play with a wide width, you pass into space, you look for the overlap, play out of defence, and you're quite expressive as well as extremely high on the tempo and slightly more direct on the passing. What all that does is give you the opportunity to get that ball over the top, passing into the space, doing it quickly with the high tempo, quite direct and more expressive so that those inside forwards can really use their skill and speed to counter. You're using a counter press and a counter attack, so you're basically going to really press the opponents into a mistake before you then launch your own counter. I like distribute to playmakers, just makes a lot of sense to me because they are going to be quite deep initially in the attacking phase. You're using the offside trap, a very, very high line of engagement and a higher defensive line. You're tightly marking and you're extremely urgent on the press. Now, as I said, the set pieces are very intricate, so we're not going to go into detail on that, there's no point. But there's set pieces for defending and attacking across every facet of set pieces, so please do download the tactic. Right, let's have a quick look now at my tips for how to use this system. This is really important that you watch this because it can be make or break as to whether the system will work for you. Right, let's begin with how to tweak the system. If you are holding a slender lead and you're worried about conceding quite late on in the game, switch from attacking to cautious mentality, adjust your complete wing backs to wing back on support, that's really important because they do fly forward, so you want them to stay further back. Go to regroup and hold your shape. That's going to mean that the players aren't pressing too far, far forward and they are going to regroup the second that they lose the ball. You also, with that, want to get rid of prevent short goal kick. Uh, that's going to again stop the attackers pressing the goalkeeper. And that should hopefully see you right to see out the game. It won't work every time, but it's definitely worth trying. Likewise, if you're struggling in a match and you feel like you're getting attacked down the wings too much and you're conceding too many crosses and opportunities, most likely need to adjust your wing backs onto a more negative role. I'd usually go for wing back support. It's quite a good balance between them getting forward and not being too attacking. The reason they're on a complete wing back initially is because they really do add 
that whip with that roll. If any of your players get a yellow card, I will tell them to ease off the tackles. That's usually something you can do in the match easily just by clicking the assistance recommendation. And substitutions are a massive must. When you get to the 60th minute, if you're struggling in the game, a sub will change the match. The advanced forward and inside forwards are the best ones to adjust. They tend to have the biggest impact, but any of the two playmakers could as well, especially the advanced playmaker. If you're struggling against a park the bus type tactic, so maybe it's quite narrow, lots of DMCs really crowded out in the middle and you can't create chances, you may have found that your inside forwards are getting stopped when they're cutting inside and that the opposition is so deep and so many bodies back you just can't get that ball over the top. In that type of scenario, move your half back up to the advanced forward role and change him to an advanced forward is just going to give you an extra body in attack. You then want to start hitting early crosses and you also want to focus your play down the wing. This is basically to get the ball out wide away from the middle of the pitch and to get those crosses in to the two forwards who are going to be there to cause trouble. You then most likely want to adjust these uh, inside forwards to wingers or inverted wingers just to give them more of a focus on either cutting back to cross or crossing from the wing, whichever you're going to do. You could switch them around to put them on winger or have them as inverted wingers, but you want to get crosses into the box. That's the whole point of the switch. Other than that, I wouldn't really adjust the tactic and I wouldn't make any uh, adjustments prior to the game. Remember, it's always really tough when you get halfway through the season, no matter what system you use. I always recommend having more than one system so you can switch it up um, and confuse the AI. If you don't do that, you will come unstuck no matter what system you use. One thing I haven't mentioned, the inside forwards should be on opposite footed to the wing that they are on. And of course, all the normal rules apply to tactics. So you've got to load it in pre-season, train it properly, make sure you've got suitable players, all that palaver. Right guys, I've talked for too long, we're gonna leave it there. If you've got any questions, jump on the YouTube channel or on the website, ask, ask away, I'm more than happy to help. Uh, the, all the links are in the description, so you should be able to get what you need from there. And if you enjoyed the episode, if it helped, please do give us a thumbs up, it really does help the channel. And why not subscribe and uh, click the bell button, that way you will get to see new episodes of our Sea Dogs Can Fly series, which will feature this tactic as and when they go live, and all the new guys will be sent straight to you. Right guys, thanks very much for following and I will see you with the next one. See you later.